Hey guys, we are at Alkeva. We're gonna be selling these waters for the next three days. The Alkeva Dam is located in Alentejo, a very dry region of Portugal. The first feasibility studies started in 1950s, but it was not until 2002 that the dam was built. With capacity to supply the region for up to three years, in theory, it reached its max capacity for the first time in 2010. With over 20 miles in length, covering 250 square kilometers, it's the biggest artificial lake in Western Europe. Aldeia da Luz, a small village, was submerged for this project, so a new village was built to relocate everyone. Although built with modern methods and materials, the new village tried to keep the original layout, plot sizes and even distances between neighbors. The reservoir and its surroundings are now a true paradise and a great sailing venue. With many islands to explore, I wish we had a few weeks to spend here and not just three days. So we better get the goose in the water. You should know the drill by now, but for those who don't, here's my boat loader. Still a prototype, but it has taken the goose to several places already. We are setting sail from Montserrat's beach. There's free parking for five trailers right by the ramp and a big car park just 200 yards away. A couple of bars and restaurants and public toilets make this a great spot to spend a summer's day. Okay guys, we're gonna have to find a way of putting all this in that little boat, nice and tidy. <laughs> yep. A bit different from my uh, minimalist hiking stuff, but <laughs> let's it's see. It's not my fault. <laughs> Okay, we managed to put everything in there and the boat is nice and tidy, well, <laughs> sort of. The only issue here is that most of the weight is there at the bow. Uh, the goose won't like that much, but we're just gonna have to sit for the half, I guess. Right, let's go then. Right, so and we're sailing the Alkeva Reservoir. This thing is huge. We're gonna spend three days here. So tonight uh, we'll find one of these islands. There's tons of them around. So I'm sure we'll find a place to stay. I thought it was time to teach Marina the basic sail trim and get her on the helm. She's always reluctant about doing so, but she'll get there as she gets more familiar with dinghy sailing. Hey guys, this is Marina's first time sailing and never tried before, keeping it steady. Nice work. But in the end, she just can't resist the decks. Most of the islands are steep, made of hard soil and rocks, making it hard to set a tent. But Golden Island seems promising. Quite a few wild geese live here, so the beach was covered in bird poo. We decided to explore a bit to see if there was a clean spot, but unfortunately, for us of course, the geese have taken over this island. Time to leave and look around the other side. At midday, the sun was really hot, but thanks to the goose's huge load capacity, we managed to bring gear and supplies for three days, including a fully loaded cooler with 12 liters of frozen water and a bunch of fresh food. Another win for the box. 
Going around the island, we found some cleaner spots, but setting camp on the windward side of the island didn't seem like a good idea, so we decided to have a look at the adjacent small island to the east. Well, I guess if the water level drops by just a foot, this will still be part of Golden Island. And this looks much better. I'm already regretting not bringing my fishing gear. We landed on the lee side and decided to have a quick look around for level ground, which wasn't easy to find to be honest. Mm -hmm. And Marina just loves the sun and the water. How lucky am I? And soon we had a visitor. We found out that this barge comes here twice a day and stays for half an hour. That can be really handy if we need something from the bar. While Marina sets the table, so to speak, I started leveling a small area for the tent. Nothing worse than sleeping on sloped rough ground. And it's now time for some home cooked foods and some fresh tomatoes picked from our garden just before we left. And now with full belly we'll go around the island to check for other spots, just in case. It's always a good idea to have a plan B. This island isn't that big at all, to be honest, and in fact you can go around it in less than 5 minutes. But we found a couple of decent alternative spots where to set camp if needed. And I'm glad we did. The wind got really strong on the other side, so we had to go away and go this side of the island. Not that we're here, but we're gonna set camp. Somewhere there. That's what it is. Okay, so here it's a lot better. I had to dig another one of these. But at least here there's no wind. A lot more to come guys, but that's all we've got time for this week. See you soon.